Hi everyone, this is just a very quick race briefing for those of you mainly for the Canny Cross Runners doing the Birch Challenge at Canuck Chase Forest um, or for anybody else that wants to listen to the race briefing before I do it in the morning. Um, apologies for the setting, the idea was to do it at Canuck Chase this morning when I went to mark the course. However, it's very wet, it's very cold and I didn't want to do it. So um, I'm having to do it in my kitchen so it looks a little bit like a hostage video. However, let's go on to it. So, um, the course is pretty mucky, nothing too bad, there's puddles around but they don't really go over the whole of the path, you can sort of leap over the few that do. Um, I'd suggest trail shoes if you've got that decision to make. Um, you could get away with road shoes but you can't get away with white. Um, and you can't get away with a white dog either if you've got a white dog, it won't be going home white. Um, course is 5k or 3.3 miles. So if you're looking to do a set distance, say a half marathon, that's four laps, or a marathon, that's eight laps, anything over that is an ultra marathon, but you can do exactly what you wanna do. If you wanna run and then stop and go to the cafe for an hour, do that, absolutely fine. You can do anything that you'd like to do. It doesn't matter to us. All that matters is that you leave the aid station before six hours. So if we start on time, that'll be at three o'clock, but your finish time might be six and a half hours it doesn't it doesn't matter we're there in in the evening as well so it really really doesn't make any difference to us um the key is that you do what you want to do and you enjoy yourself so that's how the six hour part works in terms of the course you're following the red arrows they've got little high vis bits on them as well mainly for the night runners to be honest but it might help them to show up but you're following the red arrows all the way around the course there are some little red tags as well that flap about in the wind hopefully where there's a long straight but nowhere for me to stick an arrow it's very, very simple to follow. There's ups and downs, rounds and rounds, but at no point are you bushwhacking. So kind of chase, there's millions of paths you could go through, but we stick mainly to the quite solid, well-maintained paths. There's a couple of sections where it's a little bit more off the beaten track, but it's not crazy. So follow the red arrows, you'll be absolutely fine. If for some reason the red arrows have all disappeared, follow the pink, waymarked 5k route and that will get you most of the way back there is a point where um the red arrows will be slightly different to the pink route so follow the red arrows where you can but if you just suddenly find that there's no arrows at all then follow those pink ones if you're running and the arrows do disappear then i would suggest turning around and you've missed one you if you're if you're jogging running you shouldn't be going any longer than two three minutes without seeing an arrow of some sort. Um, there's literally about 100 on a 5K loop. So you should be seeing them every 100, 200 meters or so. The water station and the aid station um, will be set up at Birch's Valley near the Go Ape, where you're starting. Um, we'll turn the registration round into um, food and everything hopefully that you could ever want. If there's something that you would like that isn't there, then ask and we'll get it ready for you. And um, hopefully we'll have something that you can have or something that's similar anyway. Um, we are doing a new timing system. I say it's not a new system, but rather than the tags that you may have used if you've raced with us before, um, we now have little white uh, squares that you'll attach to your trainers. So no more attaching it to your tops. Attach it to your trainers using the reusable zip ties. So you can attach it to your trainers. Very, very simple. Run. Brilliant. Forget about them. Keep going. They're going to get filthy, but don't worry about that. Then when you finish, you can then undo the zip tie. I'll help you with that if needs be, but you can undo the zip tie and then we can have that back. We can reuse the zip tie and the timing system should work much better than normal um, or much more reliably than normal. Better for me, won't make any difference to you. At the end of each lap, you just go through the finish arch. If you wanna then go straight back out, just turn back around, back out you go, not a problem. If you wanna to go to the toilet, go to the toilet, they're down by the all the, um, visitor center and everything you can see there. Go to the cafe, go to your car, whatever you want to do. doesn't matter to me. Um, you don't need to tell me when you're going back out. Just let me know when you're finished and we'll get you all checked out. When you are finished, we'll make sure to get your foot tag um, or your shoe tag, sorry, from you. We'll give you your medal, give you your beer and all that sort of stuff and we'll, we'll get you on your way. Just let me know when you're finished. Um, and that's about it really. So in terms of the dogs, you can only run with one dog at a time. So if you've got multiple dogs with you, you can leave one in the car, run with one, change at the end of each lap, however you want to do it. People do do that quite often at our events. That's absolutely fine. 
but you can only run with one at a time. The dog also has to be in a canny cross harness. So no sort of collars, because that's gonna result in um, unhappy dogs. We'll have dog bowls out at the start as well. And we'll have a few um, ground spikes for you to put your dog on if you come to the aid station. Please don't bring your dog to the aid station or to the registration desk. It just takes them to put their paws up on it and it just wrecks it for everybody else. So please just keep the dog away. I don't really want to hear about how they won't jump up because they do. So please just keep your dog away. It makes it a lot easier for me and the volunteers to look after everybody. Um, and that's about it. If there's any questions, just ask in the morning. It, it doesn't matter. If your dog can stay quiet while I do the race briefing, you can stay for the race briefing. That's absolutely fine. We'll start everybody off together. We've not got huge numbers, so it'll be absolutely fine doing that. All I ask is you either start at the front or the back. Um, in my experience, dogs either go crazy at the beginning or they don't move. Um, if you're in the middle, it just increases the chances of tripping. Um, the course is very, very wide. So you'll be able to overtake or get overtaken pretty quickly and pretty easily without any hassle. But please just either start either at the front or at the back. And if your dog's going crazy in the morning, just walk away from the race briefing and I'll give you time to come back so that you're not disadvantaged anyway. Excellent. Hopefully that's everything you need to know.